Let's begin. Here we go! Oh. Hi, everybody! Start the insanity. You are not worried, are you? Me? No. Well, we're waiting. Hello, welcome to Super Media All-Stars. This is our first podcast of 2018, and we got a great show for you today. I'm your host, John Harris, and today I'm joined by Jake Boston. With a name like Schmuckish, it's gotta be good. Brent Harris. Put some cheese on that motherfucker. And Andy Guild. Your dad's dead. (laughs) (laughs) So, being our first uh, podcast of 2018, we've got a great show for you today. There's a few things in the news we'll be discussing. We're going to talk about the trends of 2017 and how they translate into 2018. Wow, how trendy of us. I know, right? <laughs> we got some predictions, some just crazy predictions we're going to throw out there for 2018, things that maybe have been announced or not announced, and then we're going to end with some video game trivia. Guys, we are officially past the holidays. We're full throttle in 2018 now. Thank how God. you doing? I'm so over the holidays. Yeah, it's always a lot. Like, I don't even have it as bad as, like, you do. I don't have it that bad. Anthony's got it bad. That's true. He's got, like, four to go to. Yeah, especially with, like, split parents and stuff like that. So then the extended family events. Oh, my God. We get it. You're doing better than my mom is. (laughs) (laughs) You don't need to get us anything extra. (laughs) (laughs) On the video game side, did you guys get anything relevant to the holidays at all? I picked up Wolfenstein for 30 bucks. It was on sale. I'm like, oh yeah! I, I was, couldn't believe it was on sale again after you had yeah, been talking about it. Yeah, I was like, just gloating to you about getting that <laughs> yeah. for about thirty bucks. Yeah. yeah, it's like, hey, it's back. I'm not passing this up again. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting because I was reading the reviews for it, at least on the PC side, and the overall was uh, positive. But the recent, which I don't know what that pertains to, how mm-hmm. timeline timeline wise, uh, but it was mixed, which is like center of the road, fifty fifty, and people were bashing it because. Um, they said it was the, the same thing. The new Colossus? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Like the, I'd say uh, the 15 reviews I read were probably 12 of them were down votes. Jesus. Yeah. It's crazy. People uh, like, are just trying I... to get woke. Yeah. About Wolfenstein. I don't know. It's I, fine. I, Thank you. I'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play it. I'm going to definitely get my money's worth out of that. I, would, I probably would have paid 60 bucks for it, but. I'm assuming you guys got some time off. Did you guys get a chance to catch up on any video games that you had uh, been wanting to play? Yeah, you uh, you gave me Doom for Christmas, did along get, with a whole bunch of other stuff. Did you get a chance to check that out? I have uh, Doom for Switch. Um, I'm only like three stages in so far, probably like 90 minutes in, but it's pretty good, pretty solid. Exactly what you think, like, oh, I'm in this space colony and a whole bunch of aliens are coming out to get me from mm-hmm. hell, that type of shit. So. Gotcha. Yeah, it's fun just shoot people and get on. My uh, friend has Doom, and he said that uh, the PvP is actually really good. It's fun. So On I Switch? You... Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's nice, yeah. yeah. They have an arcade mode for it, too, which is kind of cool, just like racking up points. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, playing um, Wolfenstein 2. I'm about 70% in, and uh, I'm just going to throw this out there, that the halfway <laughs> point in that game is great. There's a turning point where everything just gets nuts, and you thought you know where it's going, and it's an awesome uh, plot churn and mechanic churn so kind of how the first one goes that's true but this one's like this one's like what yeah just blows your mind have have you been playing uh (laughs) final fantasy 6 yeah or final fantasy 3 which Uh, one you're gonna piss some nerds off (laughs) depending on who you you live in the u.s it's three yeah but if you're a true fan it's six Six, yeah How, how are you liking that so i just got past uh what do you call it? The world of destruction, or Kefka pretty much destroyed the world. Yeah. Um, I'm regathering the characters. I'm really liking the game. Did, did you wait until you had two seconds left to jump off the back to your airship? No. So Shadow's dead. No. Yeah. What? Yeah. If if you wait until there's two seconds left on the timer, Shadow comes back and says, "I I survived. Let's go." No way. <laughs> yeah, dude, you fucked up. Oh, uh, it was my first time playing it. So yeah, I didn't know. No. Yeah, I know. It, that, that's Your first time playing it. Final Fantasy yeah, three or six? Yes. It's it's one of my all time favorite. Like it's it's probably the second best RPG. I can't tell you how many times ever. I've read the plot to it just because I want to know more about Kefka because he's supposed to be one of the best villains of all time. Yeah, he's good. And like uh, this is my first time playing it, and it's been great. Other than the fact that I messed that up. <laughs> yeah, so. wait, wait. Just the uh, the ending of that game is just like built to be epic. Is so it? You'll you'll really like it. Yeah. Awesome. 
I'm playing Borderlands 2 again. So of course, what? Yeah. Oh, of course <laughs> <you> <laughs> Big surprise. <record. laughs> yeah. I had a friend that just randomly, I saw him uh, start playing it on Steam, and I just messaged him. I said, oh, you're playing some Borderlands 2. And uh, two of his work buddies uh, were coming back to the game after a long break. So I'm always going to take the chance to jump back into that game. Is Borderlands 3 going to be one of your predictions? Because no, it totally should, because that seems like a <clears throat> gimme. Yeah, you would think so. But yeah. that I just read an article... Uh, less than like three months ago about um 2k yeah and they said well yeah it's coming but we have no idea what it's going to be and we have no idea what's going to entail well what the pre-sequel was like out two years ago uh, right was, don't even talk uh, yeah but i'm just saying that's the last <laughs> borderlands game to come out yeah and that wasn't even the t- the main 2k studio that was 2k australia yeah which obviously closed because that game sucked oh they've been working on i'm guessing borderlands 3 for a long ass time and nothing oh. has came out for it i yet, hope so, so. because not too long ago, they said they had no idea what they are doing with it. So I, hopefully that was bullcrap. I would think so. <laughs> oh, I hope so. We'll see. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the news portion of our show. In that, since it's just getting over the holidays, there's not too much going on in the first part of 2018. But there's some uh, interesting stuff that I thought we'd pull and talk about. First one being that the World Health Organization recognizes two gaming disorders first one being uh gaming disorder itself an addictive behavior alongside gambling (laughs) and then hazardous gaming which is increased risk of harmful or physical mental health this supposedly affects one percent of less of all gamers but is officially diagnosed guys what are your thoughts it's higher than one percent you think so oh yeah i think it is See, I thought this was a whole bunch of hogwash, like just some type of thing that the WHO is just trying to like put out another disorder. Like, oh, it's a new year. Okay, here's another thing that people are fucked up by. Yeah, they, they could be, but you, when you think about like how they they've uh, categorized it as like you know, hazardous gaming, I could see that being kind of a eh, you know fifty fifty. But like addictive behavior, like alongside gambling, I guess yeah. they they call it. Uh, <clears throat> I could see that because. Especially now we have uh, like that Hawaiian government pushing back against uh, Battlefront. We talked about that. Yeah, right? we did. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they were calling that kind of a gambling system. So I could see like, especially mobile games, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of new stuff that comes out, free to play stuff being like ha- having so many gambling aspects to them that you yeah. could kind of start to classify that as some kind of disorder. And I remember like in other states, there, um, I mean, in other countries, there were people that would like die just like by playing League of Legends forever. Yeah, there, there was never a, guy, stopping. a guy who died playing League of Legends at like an internet cafe yeah, in yeah. public. He just dropped dead because mm-hmm. he played for like 72 well, hours. Plus it's a mix of that. Plus they're typically drinking like uh, an absorbent amount of like energy drinks. Sure. Oh, yeah. Which is just... <laughs> And that quantity in that you know span of time is terrible for what you. Are you anybody. drinking right now, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck. You, you keep on pointing at it. <laughs> Brent, <clears throat> Brent has like a, one of those double things of monster that, next to uh, it. That is, I'm just promoing that uh, for monster. That is actually just water. <laughs> oh, the label's the wrong way. <laughs> but I also drink a whole bottle of water before I can start drinking. Oh, this sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so it counteracts it, right? Yeah, that counteracts yeah. the heart attack you're gonna have. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Has there ever been a point in your guys' personal game experiences where you're like, oh, shit, I've played for way too long, I need to quit? Yep. Who hasn't experienced that? Yeah, most definitely. I was going to say. I don't think I've ever been to a point like, oh, I'm just going to I'm gonna play for 24 hours straight. I've never, I don't think I've ever done that. I think that the only thing memory that comes to mind is when Super Smash Brawl came out on Wii, me and co-star Anthony uh, beat the whole main campaign in within like an 11-hour span. Oh, jeez. And I was a <laughs> Is that the longest you've ever played a video game? I think game? so. Okay. 11 hours straight. What's the longest you guys have ever played? Uh, I've I've probably had 12 to 14 hour stints in WoW Yeah. at some point. Wow. Yeah. Well, That's it, nuts. It was really bad. Especially yeah. when Burning Crusade was out in like yeah. high school. Mm-hmm. I would play that way mm-hmm. too much. Yeah. like the Especially the expansion drops where you and your whole guild is just bum rushing as oh, fast as God, possible yeah. to get to the next level cap and start gearing out sure i think i think my yeah probably i i think i played 16 hours right. when lich king dropped yeah. when i was like yeah in, i was in a guild and we played we all oh, played yeah. together it was, it was it was bad that's so. that's like the i mean it's gotten less mm-hmm. over the years because yeah. it's but like bc times mm-hmm. it was 16 to 20 and, hours before you hit level cap yeah and, that, and that's why i'm inclined to kind of agree with the uh <laughs> hazardous gaming increases mm-hmm. risk because when i w- when i did that a couple of times i felt like i was going to die yeah. right see i've only had 
I've had two times where I've played 10 hours. One where we had like a big ass land party for Halo, like in fuck, I was in like ninth grade when that yeah. happened. And then another uh, buddy of mine, we played DDR for 10 hours straight. And my <laughs> God, that was what? insane. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was disgusting. Like we had this routine down to where we had like two DDR mats. And then I would hold both of them down. He would roll over my back to flip <laughs> over Matt. Oh, like we would get dumb, dumbass routines wow. down. Wow. We we were we were rolling in the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll see how that uh, story plays out. Obviously, the studies are now being conducted, or probably new ones are being generated. So we'll see what the World Horror Organization comes up with next. Our next point of news here is kind of all Nintendo, and it's all related to the Switch progress. So just to throw out some stats here, Nintendo Switch has become the fa- fastest selling console in the United States with 4.8 million units sold, beating the previous record of 4 million with the Wii. I'm not super surprised it beat the Wii just because it seems like it has been more available than the Wii. Just recently, though. Yeah, because, well, the Wii, the Wii I think intentionally they drifted out pretty slowly. Right. And then the second year the Wii was out, it really took off. They plan to sell 20 plus more million units of a Switch in 2018. That seems pretty lofty. Because I don't know what new games are going to come out with. Like, I know they're already thinking about uh, Kirby and a Yoshi, like that type of stuff. But those are weak, kind of weak releases. Yeah. Right. Because, yeah, so you've got the 4.8 million driven by, you know, Mario and Zelda, which are like your number one and two franchises. Not only that, you had like Mario Kart again. Mm. You had a new release every month, I think. If I remember yeah, correctly. you basically yeah. did. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were like firing on all cylinders. I don't know if they can keep that up. I don't yeah, know. Twenty. Well, it, so it's four point five mil, or four point eight million in the U.S., but we're not sure about overseas. So twenty million maybe isn't that crazy, especially if it does catch on in Russia, right? Because Russia is kind of one of those markets that it's can untapped. Go, it can go crazy. Yeah, they yeah. don't. They don't have video games too much in Russia besides like PC. I think. Right. I, I saw ahead, an article. <laughs> the Nintendo Switch has sold 10 million units in under a year, mm. and that was released in December. So, so are yeah. they planning? They're planning to double that, or they're planning to sell 20 million next year? I so, think in seven months, they sold 10 million units. I think. Yeah. I think from what I read in an article, they're wanting to like almost triple what they did this year. Wow, which sounds crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I think they could do it. I, th- I think if they expand their market, like Russia, maybe yeah. even like Brazil. Brazil <laughs> is one of those other countries that goes crazy if you sure. release like, something properly. Mm-hmm. I think it's safe to they say that your it. main Nintendo hardcore fans have got their consoles, right? Plus, mm. and now yeah. you're going to be tapping the mainstream markets. They've already kind of t- tapped on what the initial games that they, you know, they've said, like the Yoshi game and the Kirby game for this year mm-hmm. are the two bigger ones. But I think hopefully two things i have in my predictions okay. for this next year come true all right and that would i think would help skyrocket the sales back up is that a little tease there brent a little tease yeah all right. a little prime's tease. not coming out next year <laughs> no i know I, that's <laughs> not one of them i figured that's 2019 yeah. to follow up with this story uh just a i can't look too much into this because we don't actually have anything officially confirmed yet but amazon had a page come up that had 20 li- unlisted untitled uh switch games and they range from sixty to a hundred bucks, which suggests collector's editions of something are coming. Sure, but it's all correlating back to this mystery Nintendo Direct we're getting sometime this month. And Nintendo has yet to announce, but it's been rumored, it's been supposedly leaked. But well, I guess it's coming. Wasn't it like in January of last year when we got the introductory video for the Switch? It's either December or January. Yeah. So that would make sense to where, like, okay, one year ago we showed Mm. you the Switch. Here we're going to show you some big titles for this upcoming year. Yeah, which it totally makes sense because it worked for the marketing wise last year. Why would you not do that again? Mm -hmm. Even if it's only the first half of 2018. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Everything up until E3 and then blow your load again at E3. (laughs) Right? Yeah. And I'm not sure what the kind of hype that Bayonetta 3 will generate, but that won't won't be out this year. No. No way. Mm. But they're coming out with the combo pack for Bayonetta 1 and 2 for Switch, which yeah. looked really cool. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, I really want to get that collector's edition, but it's only out in Europe. I know. Oh, I know. Boo. It looked awesome. Even though if you buy the European version, it'll play in your Switch because there's no region lock. It's just so I'm matter, thinking about it. It's just a matter of somebody importing it. It's got that steel book. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then with the housekeeping, if you remember like almost a month ago before we did our video special, we did a wager on a podcast of the Video Game Awards of 2017. Now we have the official results, and I'm 
proud to announce. Oh God, you won! <laughs> that I got last. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, I, I haven't looked into these yeah, yet. Yeah, I, I didn't even check on mine score. But on the opposite end of that, in a boring three-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, Brent, wow. Andy, and Jake. You guys all came in with eight points total at well, the well, end. Well. <laughs> it was funny because we had Jake. You lost out on like. Best game of service because or uh, best online because GTA. GTA yeah. Andy pulled one out of nowhere with uh, rabbits. Yeah, with rabbits. Yep. That's no one saw that coming. That mm-hmm. shouldn't have won that award. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. But no, a lot of cool upsets. And at the end of the day, you guys had a nice friend tie. Well, I fucking hate ties. I think everybody knows yeah, that. We should find a way to resolve this sometime in the future. Yeah. I think next, if we continue with the video game awards betting service, we'll increase. We only did thirteen categories. Okay. I think there's like twenty. So maybe we'll increase our roster for next year. Sure. But fun stuff. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and jump to the first portion of our main two sections here. And that is going to be the trends of 2017 and how they affect 2018. And if we look at our agenda here, I got a list of bullet points we're going to be going through that kind of were the hot topics or some trends of 2017. And I want you to hear your guys' thoughts on how that transfers in 2018. We see more of it, less of it. First one's going to be just Battle Royale multiplayer. This is a concept that has been done before. We talked about it on the show. PUBG is notorious for it. Fortnite's notorious for it. Do you guys think this gets more mainstreamed with your other franchises this year? No. Oh, I, I th- no? I think most definitely. Really? Yeah, I think there are going to be a lot of games that like steal this formula since PUBG has just been like above and beyond like the best new game. I think there will be maybe one or two, hopefully only one, that takes this idea. I can totally see a Call of Duty just nuking this formula for sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't, if I'm being honest. Because, I mean, Call of Duty is all about season passes, expansions. Mm-hmm. Why would you not have one initial map like PUBG did? I don't know. I... I uh... I think these will lose popularity. I don't think they'll go away, but I think I think you're gonna reach a point where even like Fortnite's kind of splitting the PUBG crowd a little bit. It's just, t- yeah. it's just taking some of them away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you- and it's getting a lot. Like I, all I see people talk about now on like Twitter and and crap is Fortnite. Yeah, instead of PUBG. Yeah, because I think PUBG is getting stale and Fortnite's just kind right. of a Which, well, goofier thing. Well, that and PUBG is having kind of what the problem was. Its predecessor was which H1Z1. Which was the same formula. Mm-hmm. Um, it was having horrible time with overseas hackers no. and just um, DDoSing their servers, so they lost a lot of the player base. Which PUBG is not having the DDoS problem, but they are having problems with hackers. Which I think they just did like one million thing. They just banned people. Oh wow! It was a crazy amount of players That's because they were having insane. so much problems. Weren't they up to like twenty million active players in yeah. PUBG? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let PUBG and Fortnite have the first half of 2018, but I bet you your big fall players, like Treyarch has Call of Duty this year, I think. I could see them easily only maybe takes three to four months to develop a battle royale system. So, but the problem is what I think they're how they're going to ruin it is they're going to try to make it more complicated than what PUBG and Fortnite are, mm-hmm. which is just simply, simply you just drop out of a ship. There's a couple houses, but then you just shoot each other. Or what if like you can buy a life? Or some shit like that. Ooh. I could see that being a thing. EA Games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Coming all into over the that. Battle Royale field. Barf. I know yeah. it's a little early to talk about it, but could you see what's left of the Halo fan base getting into this kind of play? No. No. It's such a different kind of experience. I Yeah, it's it's not really for like the hardcore first-person shooter family. It's more mm-hmm. of a... Casual game on its own? Well, it's third yeah, it's person. Ca- it's kind of casual, and it's kind of like... It reminds, it reminds me a lot of SOCOM, where it's like trotting... Uh, kind of yeah. meticulous shooting That's, sure i don't know if this game would do that but one that i could see doing very well in this is red dead redemption 2 oh Their yeah multiplayer mm-hmm. that'll be that cool kind of like fits this to a t or last of us 2 uh, yeah i could that, that too jesus and with gta online having so much random aspects to multiplayer anyway you could see them just creating a nice little sidebar for a battle royale and and red dead that'd be mm-hmm. totally plausible mm-hmm. yeah so all right, and our next bullet point here is loot crates. We've talked about this plenty on this show, especially in relevance to Battlefront. What do you guys think it's going to take for maybe not just EA, but most games in general to get loot crate right? I think people that have done it right will continue to do it, like stuff like Overwatch and um, a game that like Smite. It may not be loot crates, but it may be chests, it may be decks, 
in some games. Mm. I mean, it's never going to go away. Mm-mm. It's just the people, the companies that have it and are doing it right or will just continue to do it because that's a good way to keep continue to make money. I don't see a AAA game coming out with loot boxes next year. I think it's going to be another year before you see it again. Maybe Call of Duty just because they can get away with it without uh, like in, taking the balance out of the gameplay. But I think like after the whole EA debacle, it seems like kind of a risky move to even put them in your game right now. When you have a Disney CEO call the head of EA, <laughs> oh sure, yeah. something's got to change. Mm-hmm. Supposedly that's what happened. Yeah, I mean Disney's not in charge of Call of Duty as far as we know. So uh... yeah, I could see different companies and EA even getting back into it. I don't know. I think it's still going to be a thing, just like kind of what Brent and John were saying. It's going to be a thing. It won't be a another big disaster like battlefield 2 was but yeah they'll still be there i think we have a whole other separate discussion our podcast just about gaming revenue in general and whether loot crates are dlcs handled correctly in this modern era but we'll save that for another time our next point is the market space 2017 brought a lot of this is mostly kind of relative to 20 or the switch but was also on ps4 and xbox but the market space between AAA games and indie and don't forget the Nindies. And the Nindies. <laughs> Could, I would argue that Nintendi, or the, the Nindies. <laughs> Nintendies. Nintendies. It's the, Nintendo's award show. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Nindies helped support the Switch almost just as importantly as the AAA games did. Yeah, I mean, I would think both Indie and AAA just have a place in the market right now for sure. I mean, Cuphead was one of my favorite games last year. Yeah. That was totally... It was on the bigger part of the Indie side, but it was still Indie. It was like a... If you want to call that triple A indie, <laughs> so, pretty much, yeah, think, or a double A or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think if you look at my Steam history, I've probably put like three times more hours in in the indie games than I have triple A games. I, so. I can't I can't say that, but mm-hmm. I, I could totally see that argument. And like just one weird example that came out in 2017 was uh, Hellblade, Sasuna's Sacrifice. That was okay. the Ninja Theory game. And it was all about mental disorder. It won a couple of oh, awards right. at the Video Game Awards. Yep, yep, mm. yep. That was by Ninja Theory, but it was technically an indie game because it was very low-key, $20, $30 game. That was like a happy medium between AAA and being AAA look, mm-hmm. but technically an indie game. Or you just go all the way to the other side of the coin, uh, Golf Story. Kind of came out of nowhere, and it yeah. was a huge hit. Yeah, we've talked about it playing the show, but... All right, our next point is VR adoption and becoming mainstream. We've had a discussion in this show where we thought VR was kind of hitting a brick wall because there was no standout titles, at least for PSVR. Oculus and Vibe have their more extensive libraries. But do you guys see VR taking off in 2018? Can I blow one of my predictions here? Because I didn't see the... uh, I didn't see this... I didn't read your uh, itinerary. Oh, my God. (laughs) One of my predictions for 2018 officially is that VR comes back, baby. You think so? VR has a resurgence. Mainstream, though? Mainstream resurgence? It's going to get there. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to, I think it's going to spike because I've, I keep seeing these, uh, these like second life type VR chat, like kind of creepy worlds coming out where you can put on the VR goggles, play these like simple games, talk to people in VR space. Uh, <laughs> I think I think VR is going to become more available, uh, like with Oculus, pretty soon. Yeah, I, I can see that taking off from there. And Oculus, I think, is the cheapest it's been since launch. It's pretty cheap. Uh, as with HTC's system, still pretty expensive. The but Vive, it's also, yeah, the, it's also the most elaborate. Yeah, yeah. Vive's still like eight hundred bucks, right? Yeah, but that's just, Jesus, that's, that's the like one without a PC. Sensors set up around you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. yeah. It's the best one on the market that I've heard for sure. But yeah, I don't think VR is gonna like take a big boom anywhere. It's gonna like this year should have been huge because last year, what or I guess twenty, I got uh, twenty eighteen. I can't say that twenty sixteen is when all this stuff came out. And then 2017 should have seen a lot of VR stuff, but it just kind of whimpered and kind of pooped out and didn't do a lot. Like yeah. there wasn't like barely any spikes on the radar for VR in 2017. So I, I'm just I just think it's gonna be like a spike. Have any of you guys played when? So they need to figure out how to how to use movement in games. Has anyone played Skyrim VR? No, I have not. No. Okay. It it's weird. You actually aren't allowed to walk around the world with like your uh, your joystick or whatever. You. Uh, you hold down a button and you aim at where you want to go and then you appear there 
like you you zoom there that's what doom vr does too. yeah because it, it, apparently if you were moving you'd get motion sick or something or you wouldn't be able to control it very well you'd fall over maybe so once they figure out how to get that going i think it'll be a lot better oh, yeah that sounds terrible say, it's like hard it takes, to play it's like it takes you out of the experience it's hard to play but i played the uh i played the the intro the dragon coming overhead and yeah. getting your head chopped off it was epic r- really cool yeah hmm. huh I would like to see a hit title that makes everybody want to get on board, but I've been saying that for two years now. Yeah. No, I was, <laughs> so. I think VR is going to be a big thing in 10 years, not this year. Mm, sure. For sure. Like, I once it actually gets implemented into where, like, you can put on something and it can take you somewhere, like, if you can, if I can sit in my room and, like, go to, like, the Louvre and mm-hmm. look at all, like, the artwork, like, once real life stuff starts getting into VR, that's when a lot more people will be interested in it. Gaming, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. I could see it both ways. Mm. Brent, you were uh, advantageous for VR in our last podcast. You really wanted to see it, or our video special. You wanted mm. to see it take off. What's it going to take for it to get there? <clears throat> Learning that Skyrim is a point-and-click thing. That's a, <laughs> that's a huge downturn. It, it's not It's not bad, though. I mean, if I haven't God. seen a lot of the, sp- the Skyrim <laughs> stuff, but I did see the, the Doom VR, and it's really cool. I mean, it's just like, mm. it's like a 360 where you go around, and you can either like click to go somewhere, or you can shoot somebody. And once you kill them, you kind of like take their place on where they are in the map. Like, yeah. but it's still like not like a real game. It's just kind of like fun games you play for half an hour and then you get out. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those things you, you would get used to it if you played it for a while. But it is a little ham-fisted, weird. I don't know. There was the demo for like it felt like you were on a mine cart and you're going to like an old toy factory. I think it was like a shooter. Oh, you're thinking of uh, <clears throat> the roller coaster ride we played. Until Dawn. Until Dawn. Yeah. yeah. Rush of Blood. Was that yeah. what it was? Yeah. yeah. I think more of that kind of stuff. Yeah, but that's super gimmicky. It's just like, okay, you don't move, but it's like a carnival ride. Well, I know, but that, but make that's obviously a very basic idea. Mm-hmm. All right, we got to move on to the next one. And that is 2017 kind of brought back uh, big open world gaming. We had Persona, which was more not as open world, but we had Horizon. We had Mario, we had Zelda, some of your biggest ones. And I'm skipping over a few here, but do big open world games that required tons of exploring and tons of hours continue into 2018? I mean, that's hard to say because games take years to develop. Mm-hmm. So I would say if people like latch onto this trend, it would be uh, games that come out in like 2019, 2020. Yeah, I'd say they're definitely developed. Well, Red Dead, yeah, that's I guess, only- will be the one mm-hmm. coming out. That's yeah. the only one I could think of right yeah, now. Yeah, but I, I, I could. They're definitely in development. I mean, Zelda hit so hard. It's on the open world front. Yeah, they're they're gonna be. There's gonna be some really good open world adventure games coming out in the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. Does that climbing mechanic? get copied or do you think people are like we'll leave that to zelda because zelda just already did it right i think the the aspect of you can do whatever you want at whatever pace you want and if you just want to climb a tree for three hours look you can do that mm-hmm. does that narrative work with other franchises though it didn't work with zelda until they did it that's true yeah. so you wouldn't know <laughs> until you try i guess just fucking copy and paste it to anything and it should work yeah yeah, yeah and they kind of changed like the the climbing and gliding thing kind of changed how you get around in those kinds of games because sometimes like with with like Skyrim, you always want to climb over the mountain just to like take the straight line to get somewhere. Right. So it kind of did some clever things with how it funneled you into different areas while still sure. letting you do I whatever you want. I can't imagine uh, Elder Scrolls game where you're in first person climbing <laughs> well, in VR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard anybody talk about this, but I would love to have like the Breath of the Wild engine, I guess. Uh, like poured into the new Beyond Good and Evil game, mm. that would be amazing. Be cool. Did any of you yeah. play the original game uh, on GameCube? Okay, yeah. yeah. Just imagine, just like looking to take photographs, like anywhere you want to go. Yeah, mm. um, uh, it'd be awesome. Yeah, too bad that game's years away. Is my guess. Well, they've been teasing that game for five plus years, so who <laughs> knows true. when that game comes out? That's true. Yeah, like the E three trailer they showed last year is just like, oh, okay, this is totally brand new, and I'm guessing 2020 at the earliest. Would you guys say that 2017 was too much open world games where it got your backlog just got destroyed because of these big games? Or do you think it was a good balance or, for some reason, not enough? I've lamented uh, Horizon already a few times. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, if Red Dead was the only big game that came out this year with those open worlds like that, I might be okay with that. Because I'm okay with one big, giant open game that, because I think Grab put poured maybe 100 hours into GTA 5 just in. The main story and playing around. 
well, fuck, even for Red Dead Redemption, I put like 40 hours into that. Yeah. And this game's supposed to be like four or five times bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. So, Jesus. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. All right, and then our next one is games of service and big FPSs. So, Destiny 2 was a big talk of fall 2017. Got a lot of hype at first, but then it kind of fell off. People actually, like our co-star Jesse, <laughs> said there was no content to do. Post-game and after the raids, people were bored and left with nothing to do. Yeah, I heard they were just giving up on that game. Like really? I heard they were just abandoning it. Abandoning it. There was some kind of uh, big news story that broke a few days ago about how they failed. Seriously? Yeah. Mm. So I'd have to I'd have to look more into that. But <laughs> it's just I, yeah. Like seriously, <laughs> Bungie, what the hell? Yeah, it's it's really sad. And the they... one thing that has plagued MMOs for since the beginning of time since they've existed was end game content. Yeah. Like the one thing you should concentrate on. And they didn't even do it. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. I mean, I hope Destiny fails so Bungie does something different. Because mm. I don't give a yeah. fuck about Destiny at all. Yeah, I don't Especially either. when you only have three classes. Right. And it's like, well, what are you going to do now? Level up a second Warlock or whatever? And it's the same three so. classes as the first game, right? I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Oh, so, God. Yeah. We don't have terrible. our Destiny expert here, but is that old saying, the journey is more important than the destination apply? In these Shut games. up, Joe. I'm just saying. I'm just saying look at not other, with MMOs. I mean, just look at other MMOs. Like they're coming out with new ca- classes and characters. Yeah, WoW comes out with a new class or character every time they come out with an expansion. Yeah, and they put mm-hmm. in like like two or three years worth of new endgame patches. Right. Like the last Legion did really well. Yeah. With like uh, every six months, they came out with a big expansion update. They got to argue. Games like Warcraft that have has, to do stuff like Warcraft that. Warcraft has had like 10 years underneath its belt though. Mm. No, but that's what I'm saying. You take that formula, and cre- apply make it, it from the start. Own, yeah, and then lay it on yours. Gotcha. All right, so we'll see where games of service and first person shooters go in 2018. Uh, the last trend we're going to talk about, and what's when we've also talked about playing this show, and it's actually mostly just kind of more towards the Nintendo side, is pre-ordered nightmares. And I'm specifically regarding the SNES Classic. you got to bet that Nintendo's going to keep this gimmick of reselling bundles and these little <coughs> nostalgia uh, devices. So in the hypothetical that we get an N64 device, is it going to be another hassle like the... Super Nintendo was probably, but yeah. at least they're making baby steps with like the SNES. Like they're still pro- they, like obviously no, they it's still wanted, mm-hmm. so they're still producing it. They're like, yeah, we're extending it, mm-hmm. we're making more in 2018. I mean, yeah, that's just Nintendo <clears throat> in a nutshell. Like they always right. do this. They're fucking doing it with Super Mario cereal for fuck's sake. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. So <laughs> stupid. Yeah, oh that's true. Anything Nintendo wow. is just like okay, yeah, we'll make just enough to make you want it, but if you don't get it, you're gonna wait, but you'll still really want it. Yeah. But- wasn't there also like was there a switch reserve problem? Was there was it hard to find post? Yeah, for post for launch a, for a little bit. For a couple months it was, yeah. For like six months. Was it up until mm-hmm. like October is when you're up until like Odyssey came out? It's like oh yeah, you guys want switches? Yeah, here's switches. Oh, <laughs> here's here's Odyssey. You can play in your switch. Was our first bundle? No, it was Mario Kart. Mario Kart was our first bundle. But I think it was across seas. Well, yeah, we had Splatoon over here. That was like oh, the big, true. big first bundle. I can remember there's been Splatoon twos on the shelves for, for a short amount of time. Yeah, better than they better than launch, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like Jake said, I don't think we're going to see Nintendo. Like Brent said, maybe get baby steps as far as pre-orders go. No, but N- Nintendo's been doing this forever. And Nintendo fanboys are notorious. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm, I can't, I can't talk bad because I'm right there with them. I'm spamming websites. Aren't you, yeah, are you the guy who like refreshed Amazon every two <laughs> seconds? Until Amazon, you're... Best Buy, Target, Walmart, yeah. all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you have to. That's what it takes these days. If if they announce Game Boy uh, Classic, I'll be right there with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, Please, I would give us love that. That's, that's the one I want. I want that more than N64 yep, Classic. Same here. Oh man, that actually leads us into our next section. That is predictions. For 2018, that would be one hell of a prediction. I don't yeah. know if we're gonna do that or not. I, yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't write it down, but <laughs> uh, I don't. I, I think they would come out with the N64 Classic first because there, there hasn't been any. Well, there hasn't been talk about either. No, really. Right. So. so I asked these guys to write down their top three predictions for 2018. When they can play it safe. They can be absolutely crazy and guess what they just what they want and think it'll actually happen. And then we're gonna do if. We'll just go ahead and throw our opinions on these predictions and see how that plays out. I could have done like 10 predictions. <clears throat> oh, I know. Yeah, I could have like went to town on this. Yeah, mm-hmm. so how we're going to do this is we're just going to go one at a time across the table, and we'll each list our predictions. If yours gets taken, I ask you guys to create alternatives, so we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I want to do all mine. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going like alternating or? 
What yes. do you want to do? So I'll do, well, I'll do one. Gotcha. I'll okay. do two. So who's starting? I'll go ahead and kick it off. This Nintendo is diapers. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm can't gonna... get them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they, you want them. And they take all your shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and some random thought. Sony announces Final Fantasy 15 2. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you're starting this off. I am starting it off with that. God damn it. Because Square Enix is notorious for making sequels <laughs> to their numbers. I fucking hate Final Fantasy 15 so much. I hate you for saying that. <laughs> After how much they invested in the Final Fantasy 15 universe, I could see them wanting to keep making games for that universe. You're ridiculous. Oh my god. You Please the- don't. <laughs> And they laced four DLC patches, in patches for <sighs> Final Fantasy XV. I don't know why they'd give up on that world. Despite what Andy thinks, I think it's a decent game. They released patches that gave you story that happened in the middle of the game that they then said, you'll find out about this later, and they fucking winked at the camera. Fuck that game. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that fucking game. Um, let's do this. I think that Red Dead Redemption 2 will be the highest selling game of 2018. I think yeah. that's... Uh, I could see that. I think it's pretty easy to bank on. Unless yeah. there's any surprise announcements. I know, that's the thing. But we don't know. Yeah. That's but, assuming it comes out at a decent time when it can make its sales. Uh, my my guess is that this will come out probably October. like... No. Is this supposed to come out like April? It is, but I, I, I can see be. it getting pushed yeah, back Yeah, but it's again been delayed already. already. Yeah, it's already been delayed once. I don't know yeah. if it'll get delayed again. Well, I, I they think, want to perfect this thing. I think with a game with that much hype, I don't think it's going to matter too much when it comes out. Yeah, it's Rockstar. Yeah. Because it's going to, yeah. Well, it's got its cult falling, but will it do that great? I mean, that's... Will it do that great? Rockstar well, I know games it'll always do. That. do. Like, I, I'm surprised Grand Theft Auto still sells like it does. I'm not. Like, no, GTA no. is a beast all on its own. It's not going to sell GTA numbers, yeah. but I, I think Red Dead Redemption 1 sold a massive shit ton. Pretty positive. Yeah. Over a long span of time, though, too. Yeah, no, that's the thing. But yeah. I think it'll be the highest selling game of this year. I mean, there are a lot of heavy hitters, but I think this one by far will. Just as a random thought, if there is a Red Dead Redemption online, does it launch with it or at a post date? I know with GTA Five, it released like two weeks after. Mm -hmm. And then even then, like it didn't get to be where it is now until like six months, a year after release. And then like GTA Online is just a beast all on its own. I'm hoping Red Dead gets to that, but I don't even see it doing that. Yeah. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 gets a release date. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I see that as a 2019 game, but what would you predict that game to come out in? Uh, Well, hopefully 2019. 2025. 2025. <laughs> yeah, we've just. Uh, oh, so we you just... think we get a release date in 2018, but it's not in 2018 that it comes <clears throat> right, out. Right, yeah. Just, okay. just the release date, not the game. Gotcha. Oh, God, I, no. I had that as one of mine. I'm not going to do it now. I'll do it like a banker one, but I have. It, it won't come out this year. But No, I'm, I'm saying it won't either. I'm gotcha. just saying we'll get the release date this year, okay. which gotcha. is sad. Gotcha. All right, so uh, since we're doing our crazy ones, uh, so you guys know how people talk about The Last of Us now, and they say, oh, the story is so great, it, it touched my heart, you know, whatever. Oh, no. <laughs> my prediction, God of War proves to be a powerful story about fatherhood and is talked about for years. <laughs> like on par with Last of Us? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Wow. I think it's going to be, I think it's the next big, like, this is the game you need to play to feel again so I, I think want, it's gonna game. take more i want a, this game to come out and then a reality series to come out and it's like <laughs> grown men taking their kids out into the wilderness like all right we're gonna punch this bear in the face <laughs> <laughs> it was terribly wrong you think they s- totally switch focus which from videos we've seen it's just variable cause that god of war becomes more of a narrative game than an action game yeah that that's what i feel like they're going for and i like because they've been talking about how it's going to be more cinematic and more They've, right. they've been kind of hinting at it being more of a meaningful story. And Kratos is kind of a sad character anyway, so I, I could see it being something different than you'd expect. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to admit, I actually liked God of War 1 through 3. Yeah, uh, they're, the action. they're good games. Yeah, maybe the, maybe the play style's a little outdated, mm-hmm. but they're fun playthroughs. Even if you go back now and play now, I like them. So, All right, my number two is, you're going to find a theme here, I just kind of made big, crazy announcements for each <laughs> oh, big company. Here we go. Microsoft announces a new Fable game at E3, and it's a game of service with a single-player campaign as well. Shut up, John. (laughs) These are just like, oh, I want this to happen so bad. (laughs) This is John's wet dream. I know, right? This is so gross. (laughs) I could totally see bringing Fable back. Maybe not to that degree, but I could could see that happening. John started this podcast for this moment. (laughs) (laughs) 
Remember Fable Legends? Yeah. You're the only one because nobody else does. That was a rip, that was a rip of Evolve. Wasn't that what that game was? A giant bad guy oh and God. three heroes tackling it. No Four one remembers because nobody yeah. cared. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another Fable game. I'll play the hell out of it. Barf. Let's see here. Number two for this guy. Um, we haven't heard a lot of Nintendo's plans for online. I think... Uh, I, I know originally they decided that they were going to have like one free NES game per month with your online subscription, which is cost like 20 bucks a month, but we haven't heard anything about virtual console. I think they're going to go bold with it. I mm-hmm. think they're going to do a subscription service, kind of like a Netflix of games yep. to where like, Hey, here's all of our stuff. Here's our whole catalog. Just pay us like 10 bucks a month. You can play whatever the fuck you want. Do we, our list the same? <laughs> Did you do that? Yeah, I did do that. I've been been thinking that for a while. They might do something like that. I've been like hoping for it. So Um, that's my wet dream. I was kind of hoping they were just like teasing it. Like, yeah, we're thinking about it. And then they're just going to pound it into us. Yeah. We'll see. It's it's too smart. I don't know if Nintendo will do it. (laughs) I don't know. If they drop the, if they drop VC and it's amazing. Yeah. And it's like, hey, first at first, you can get like SM64 and. I don't know. Oh, what el- whatever else. Yeah. Just in comparison, do you guys actually like the Wii and Wii U virtual consoles? Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, they had everything on there. Yeah. yeah. It was I, awesome. I feel like if they did charge like 20 bucks a month for that kind of service, they'd mm-hmm. make a lot more That's money the thing, than they though. did like, selling like $2 NES games. Like Doom yeah. and Skyrim are getting re released on the Switch for yeah. 60 So, of course, people are going to pay the See, same game they have three copies of. Yeah. And for the same, like, $30, so, $40 but that, again. Yeah, that's not even me. I think the virtual console will be, like, Nintendo up to GameCube, but nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. So And then all of that stuff you can pay per month. No, I think that's where it'll they'll, oh, really? they'll cap it. Yeah, I can totally sure. see that. But do you think, in the long run, does Nintendo make more money from pricing these things out individually? Or do you think they're going to make more money by people... Coming, I'm guessing they'd be in and out of this monthly service. When the, I what, don't. I think if you think they I think stay you, on to play these games whenever they want. Yeah, people. I, keep, I would. People keep their Netflix subscriptions mm-hmm. for no reason. If you only do games like from NES to GameCube, and you can are able to stream those. I'm not even talking about streaming. I'm just talking about downloading them to your console. Mm-hmm. And as long as you pay a subscription, kind of like PS Plus, you get game, free games per month. Sure. Yeah. Yep. If, as long as you pay the subscription, you get to play the game. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, Brent. I hope to God that the Zelda game that they're talking about that they've already started making is kind of like Majora's Mask, where it is the exact same game. They just throw a different mask over it, change the story, and they pump the game out again. Mm. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be okay with that. That'd be pretty. Cool. I don't think it comes out in 2018. No, I'm guessing. But if they if they do are out, if they are doing this, obviously it could be a quick turnaround. So what would you want to do? Like I know Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask. Like, the main thing is just, like, how fucking goofy Majora's Mask right. was. Is that the same type of game you would want in this sequel to Breath of the Wild? I have no idea. I would love a Majora's Mask for to the Breath of the Wild. It'd be good. And you know what's going to happen. Because yeah. this Zelda came out at the launch of the Switch. Oh, God. What yeah. if it was, like, a Majora's Mask throwback where you could put on masks and transform into stuff? You could turn into, like, the uh, the champions or whatever. The four uh, champions. Oh, yeah. That'd be sweet. Oh, my God. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, Andy, your next one. Uh, okay, so next one, I'm going to go with another specific game. I'm going to predict that Dreams is a, an enormous flop, <laughs> and it will be like the next uh, No Man's Sky. Oh, man. Yeah. They had they had this at uh, PSX a month ago. Mm, yeah. And this is the first time we've seen it in years. And it reminds me of a lot of uh, Little Big Planet. A lot like yeah. Little Big Planet. And like, that, I don't know why this isn't called Little Big Planet 4. Right. But supposedly. Basically, it just gives you full creation. Yeah. More than so than Little Big Planet. Yeah. But gamers are lazy. They like pre rendered stuff. Yeah. I know there's a, a community out there for yeah, making no. games. So you've got like Mario Maker and stuff. Yeah. But, I, but a lot of those people are really into like that. Um, like, uh, I want to be the guy. There's like that indie game that was kind of like Mario Maker where you could make these just crazy scenarios, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Dream seem, doesn't even seem like a level creation thing so much as it seems like a. Like what was the trailer I saw where you were you created your own guitar and played it? Yeah, it's right? weird. Like, you can create anything according to them. Like fuck that. That's <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> Which I back in the PS3 day, I loved Little Big Planet. I would never create anything. I would just play yeah. people's creations, and they came up with a whole bunch of really cool stuff. But it was in the plane of a side-scrolling game. This mm. where you can where you can create anything <laughs> weirds me the fuck out. I don't know if I would like it. And I love Media Molecule and everything Little Big Planet. So. Yeah, 
But I also like, yeah. I, I tend to replay franchises that I really like. I'm very skeptical when it comes to other people's interpretations. Do any of you remember Project Spark for Xbox One? I do. Oh, God, barely. The only reason I remember yeah. is because, like, Conquer DLC was on there. Yeah. Very oh. randomly. Huh. But, yeah, I think this is going to go the way of Project Spark to where, like, they're trying to push it big, but it's a, t- it's a quiet push and nobody yeah. will care. And it seems like one of, the, one of those things that's, like, too ambitious almost where... You really, really, really are leaning hard on people to create things with the stuff you've given them, and I don't think a lot of people will care that much. No, people tend to like to like to play what they know. Yeah, that's my is my argument there for sure. All right, and my last one, Cyberpunk from CD Projekt Red mm. is trailered at E3 on the Microsoft cool. stage, but there is no current systems listed underneath that trailer, which I'm gonna say it's a next gen game, like PS5. Yeah. Jesus, the next Xbox. I don't already. Know. Uh, I don't know if it comes out on next gen, but I I bet we see something from Cyberpunk. God, I hope so. It's, it's been too long. No, I I bet this game doesn't come out for another couple of years for sure. Oh no, but yeah. I, I think we'll see like a trailer, or some some kind of thing to tease to yeah, tease you. That I could see. All yeah. I want is a trailer, but I'm, if it's if it's another two years away, you gotta be we gotta be talking or dipping into the beginning of the next cycle. So you think this cycle is only gonna be like five years? Yeah. I think PS5 like, is already talked about. Not, not really. Not officially, but I mean, rumored like, to hell. PS3 and uh, 360 had like seven, eight years. Yeah, I think all these, what do you want to call them, half uh, console gen updates. Like the Pro and the yeah. X and I everything. Think I think they won't call it PS4 Pro. Like they'll just go ahead and call it the PS5 and give it a half upgrade again. I could see it. Huh. I hate these half upgrade. Yeah. I could see it, though. I could totally see it. But, but obviously, you guys know I'm a big fan of The Witcher of CD Projekt Red, so mm-hmm. give me Cyberpunk. I'm excited. Yeah. I, I didn't give a fuck about Witcher, but I'm excited about Cyberpunk. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. The other, the first two that I did were kind of lobs. Uh, this one is a fastball that I don't know will happen, but I have a assumption will happen. I think Spider-Man will sell better than The Last of Us Part Two and God of War combined. Whoa. Ouch. I, I think so. I could see it. I could see that happening too, just because the, there's more appeal there. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Spider-Man's a huge property. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like there hasn't been a good Marvel game for like the history of the MCU. So if they can really pull this mm. off, they can get a big audience for this. I know right. God of War, like their numbers have been dipping with Ascension, yeah. and they're trying to do the so- or the big reboot for this. Last of Us Part Two. I don't know how well The Last of Us sold. I think it That's did my- all right. It was super yeah. like critically acclaimed, but I- and yeah, they got like a re-release on PS4 just to push those numbers, but. Yeah. Who knows? The trailers that I've seen for Last of Us Part Two have been very out there and like nothing like the first one. I don't. I think it'll be close. I think it'll be close too. Yeah, that is kind <laughs> of a that is kind of a fast ball, but I it's very feasible. I could see that happening. Yeah, it we'll just, see. Right, and this is only I. I'm pretty positive God of War and Last of Us mm. Part Two will be really good games. Mm. I don't know if Spider Man is gonna be good or not. Yeah, that, I'm worried about that too. It's Insomniac making it, so I'm. They have good quality with like Ratchet and Clank, and yeah, I love those games. So I'm hoping this is good too. But yeah, I have no idea. Uh, we kind of I'm, I'm kind of do a two part thing. Uh, we kind of already talked about it earlier, but maybe like a new Elder Scrolls game. Uh, teased at best. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but more importantly, hope to God there is a new Diablo game, not Diablo. <laughs> hey, shut <laughs> up, Diablo game. <laughs> I don't know if it'll happen. I kind of doubt it. I doubt they even touch it, but I really hope they do. How long ago did three come out? Four years? Six, it's been six a long years? Time, yeah. Holy I, shit. It's been a while. Yeah, it's and they haven't really done years. a whole lot with it besides nope. Seasons and the Crusader and the um, the Angel of Death. Necromancer. Yeah, the like the expansion or whatever. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's Blizzard. Blizzard's crazy with whenever they come out with games. That's, yeah. yeah, it's true. They, it took like, them forever. They, it took them forever to come out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Starcraft, Starcraft Two was like yeah. twenty years later. I kind of hope Starcraft was like the kind of gimp to get them through to hopefully dropping Diablo this year. I would like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we'll see. Uh, I th- I think Red Dead Redemption wins Game of the Year next year. Really? It's it's, it's an early call, but it just seems right. That's just, way too early for me. It just feels right. Yeah. Yeah. We don't even know what like the other second half of the year is going to bring yet. It's either going to be Red Dead Redemption 2 or the new Elder Scrolls. <laughs> For sure. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I, I don't know. God of, I don't know if God of War will be best. 
I'm hoping it will. I think it's going to be really good. I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I just I think Red Dead's going to have yeah. the the mass appeal and how it's going to How does how does Elder Scrolls even top Skyrim? Like what do you do? Oh, uh, what's there? There is one more giant continent you can go to. Uh, they haven't and it's, they explored haven't, yet. Yeah. Mm. Nobody talked about Metroid, Pokemon, other than Brant. You talked about Zelda and the stuff for the online Switch, but not a lot of whole <clears throat> Switch talk outside of that. I don't. It's hard to say. I mean, we can do like off the cuff predictions right now if you want to. It really wouldn't surprise me if they didn't do anything <laughs> Metroid this year. I just yeah. looked at Jake's notes on his phone. <laughs> the PC sucks and will continue to suck. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to throw that in there, but I didn't. <laughs> well, Andy did it for you. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was like, what the? <laughs> we can do one. We'll do one rapid fire, but we can't oh discuss God. it. No, that's fine. Prediction for 2018. Oh. Um, there will be a Game Boy Classic, and it will have 30 games. Brent? It's not really a prediction, but Jake gets a bag of dicks thrown at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you thought your real prediction? <laughs> no, it's not a prediction. It's happening. <laughs> You're saying PC sucks. <laughs> That's saying Brent has a bag of dicks. <laughs> yeah. I always keep it at the ready. <laughs> Andy? Uh, I, uh, Smash Brothers Switch port. No uh, way. A, no way. A port of the, the Wii U. Right? No way. Yeah, I think... No way. I'll I'll jump on that back. A port. trailer, <clears throat> a trailer for New Smash. Maybe, hmm. not a port of Wii U Smash. A no trailer way. for Prime Four. <laughs> to back wagon off that, I'm gonna say we get a Metroid Prime trilogy with motion motion controls in 2018. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that a collection. Yeah, that's, for sure. Yeah, because yeah. they're they're trying them. to hype up uh, Metroid. Prime Four, and then they'll drop. The Prime oh, Four trailer. God, you imagine if they had like a demo of that at E three, mm-hmm. people would oh my lose God. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or if their whole booth was Metroid. Yeah. Think oh, about, oh, think oh. It, God, you imagine if the Nintendo or the Odyssey world at E three was all Metroid. Oh, That'd be God. cool shit. Oh God. Yeah. You have to roll up into a ball and roll into. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Sweet. Well, that would just make sense because they're if they're building Metro Prime Four, which they are, <clears throat> you could just put the first three games and kind of figure out like the control options and everything. This is like yeah. a blueprint for that. Yeah, and I think that's material that you could use in a direct because it's technically old material, but people would still lose their shit in a direct over it. I wouldn't be surprised if they got that out in this new one in January. I really wouldn't. Really, a re- uh, yeah, a re-release. I really don't. I could see that in the first six months of 2018, just in the back pocket because that seems to be their theme lately. <laughs> All right, but we have to jump into the final portion of our show, and that is video game trivia. Yeah, uh, Brant was late <laughs> running today, so I'll be doing trivia, but we're going to oh. keep Brant's new format for the sake of oh, Jesus. pay respect to the trivia master, Brant. Oh, uh, if you're not familiar with this format, is I play a clip, and the first person will go first. We'll go around the table until they, somebody gets it. I'll play a second clip, and the next person will start, go around the table, and I'll play the third clip. The next person will go and try to guess it. So basically it gives everybody an equal chance to get a point. When the fuck did this happen? Shape last of po- water, bro. Last podcast. Oh, Brent, I was right there with you. I was concerned. <laughs> you hated it first. You'll love it. But <laughs> we're going to do it clockwise. So we're going to start with Jake taking the first guess on this first clip. Great. <laughs> what? This sounds like Lion King, but it's not. <laughs> Sounds like Donkey Kong 64. Like goofy shit. I want to say Turok so bad. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> oh, fuck. And this is harder because the first round we go without any clues. Mm. And then if uh, all of us get wrong, he okay. gives half the clues. If all of us get it wrong again, he gives all the clues. Um, I am going to guess. God, <laughs> Donkey Kong Country Returns. Incorrect. Brent, uh, it's got the oh. oh yeah, I don't, I don't, we heard no, it. That's what I, I know, but that's... the intro sounded like yeah. like the do 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 a coconut oh. tune. Yeah, video games is so much harder than movies. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, for the sake of reference, I didn't actually put any quotes in this. This is all music soundtracks. Mm. Yeah, shoot your which shot. makes it even tougher. We'll just go Horizon. I don't know. Incorrect. Sid Meier's Civilization (laughs) 4. No, incorrect. (laughs) What? Fuck. I was pretty confident in that. All right, so release 2002. 
single player. <clears throat> okay. Action adventure, beat em up slash shooter. Tarzan. Incorrect. Damn it. Um, I'm gonna go Ratchet and Clank. No way. Incorrect. Mm, that's a good guess. Uh, blinks the time cat. <laughs> <laughs> good guess, but no. Uh, it's the time sweeper. Oh, no, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, platform GameCube. Okay. Developer Rare, published by Nintendo. Oh yeah. GameCube Rare. I can't think of any GameCube Rare games. I can't either. Like that generation, I can think of mm. Grab by the Ghoulies, and that's not that's Xbox. I wanted to say Billy Hatcher as soon as I heard GameCube, but that's mm. Sega. Hmm. Do you know it, Brent? Oh, you are. <laughs> He's deep yeah, in he thought. Is. He slash <laughs> angry. He's trying to massage his brain for answers. I'm getting. <clears throat> I'm getting stuck up on the beat 'em up. Yeah, beat 'em up yeah. second, shooters third. Right. Star Fox Adventure. Correct. Yes. Oh, oh that's, that's of course it is. I yep. had to think of that. Damn Sorry. It. Oh man. <laughs> wow. What you I knew have? it was in my brain somewhere. <laughs> what do you guys have gotten that next? Oh no. I was but gonna guess. Now that I even rem- yeah. I remember the fucking level on that damn. Yeah, game. I can that's think of it now. <laughs> the was, thorn tail. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking Eternal Darkness, but the song is so upbeat. <laughs> God. Oh, Good man. job, Jake. So you get the first point with your first clip. <clears throat> Good job. All right, this is clip number two, and this will be for Brent kicking it off. <laughs> I, it, you know it. No. Oh. <laughs> I just like the song a lot. Any first guesses, Brent? Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> so. I'm guessing it's a popular game. Yeah, it sounds like the I don't know Kingdom Hearts two. Incorrect, Andy. I was thinking like Final Fantasy VIII. Incorrect, Jake. Because I'm thinking like Death Junior, but you don't know that game. Mm. Nope. And I was thinking like Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge. See, that's what, I was, you that's what it that sounded game. like at the beginning. <laughs> I'll I'll say Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge. Incorrect. Okay, I thought so. I'm gonna say I'm gonna be pissed. I yeah. never would have gotten that. <laughs> that's yeah. Fucked up. Although I was I was thinking Nightmare Before Christmas. So yeah, well, yeah Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. yeah, that made sense. All right, first release was 2006. <sighs> God, mm. So long ago. Not really. Mm-hmm. Ten years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Genre action adventure, single player, multiplayer added later. I'll give you that. What? what? Yep, in 2006. Okay. Games is so hard to do this with. Right. Mm-hmm. With no context besides music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's so much fun, so much funner when you make the connection, I think. Yeah, Star Fox, when I saw that, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like an epiphany. Yeah. We'll say, we'll say Star Wars. Incorrect. Obviously, that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Could this be Jack 2? Incorrect. <sighs> Damn it. Jake. Yeah, Spooky World 2006. Voodoo Vince. Incorrect. Damn it. <laughs> All right, Fuck. round two of clues. Platforms included PS2, Wii, 360, Android, and iOS. Mm. So there was later mm. renditions. Uh, those release dates in order were 2006, 2008, and 2016. Developed by Rockstar Vancouver and published by Rockstar Games. Okay. I don't know. Just go GTA. No. Incorrect. Yeah, obviously. Action Adventure, multiplayer added later. PS2, Wii, two years later. Android last, or two years ago? Bully. Correct. That's what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Fuck. What? Yeah, yeah. That's correct. <laughs> All right. Yep. That was like the school running around. Oh, yeah. It came out for 360 oh, too. I said that. Did you? I yeah. Forgot oh, all okay. About that. Yeah. Well done. Uh, yeah. That yeah. yeah. was. Uh, oh, there was like four other. Uh, I don't know what to call it championship editions that came out. Scholarship editions that came out. Right. Yeah. That post, was my guess. Good job, Andy. Post launch. Oh, so. Good job, Andy. Andy, and you get the next clip. That was cool when it clicks. You're like, oh yep. shit, yeah. it's bully. So, yep. Good job. All right. All right, and our third and. Final clip. 
<laughs> that sounds very familiar. Yeah, right? it does. Oh my god. <laughs> I've heard this so many times. Return of Shinobi. Incorrect. Ooh, that was a good guess, though. It did sound very, like, Japanese-esque. It's probably not right. You probably have never played this. Fantasy Star 3. Incorrect. Thought so. Brent? Uh, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to go with Mortal Kombat. Incorrect. That's right. a good guess, too. First round of clues. Genre is fighting. Sounds about right. First release, 1991. Outside of 1991, a ton of other renditions. Street Fighter 2. Correct. Yeah! Yeah. Yep. Boy. Good job, Andy. All right. You, you took the win for the night. I thought I thought Street Fighter 2, if you hadn't said that last part, I thought it was going to be too obvious. So I was going to go with like like Primal Rage or some shit. <laughs> that was Chun Li's level from the original arcade. Ooh, gotcha. gotcha. Heard that a ton. Yep. Makes perfect I was gonna sense. say it sounded very Japanese. Yep. Yeah. Well, so you said that I'm like, okay, maybe it's a Mortal Kombat. Mm, yeah. And then that was a really good said guess fighting, too, yeah. so I'm like Street Fighter. Danny, yeah. don't get it. <laughs> Damn it. You guys want to do one more just for fun? Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Timer though, thirty seconds or something. <laughs> yeah. Or you just want to yell? You just want to scream? You guys want to yell for this yeah, one? Yeah, let's do that. All right. There's already a winner. Is this Persona? <laughs> um, Definitely JRPG esque. Yeah, it does sound like sounds like oh, a Final oh. Fantasy. Oh. Like a Final Fantasy sounds like a Final Fantasy hotel. Xenoblades? Final Fantasy Final Chrono Fantasy Cross. 9. I like this song. Yeah, it's very yeah, it's jazzy, yeah. We should make a playlist called uh, Video Game Songs You Fuck To. Because <laughs> that would be that. <laughs> That'd be the number one on the list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good guess. Genres, puzzle platform adventure. <laughs> All right. Release date, February 2011. Luminous? Developer, Atlas. Oh, oh Catherine? <laughs> Catherine. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. why. Yeah. Japanese JRPG sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. finally clicked. And the reason I wanted to do the bonus round just because I need to talk about Catherine's getting a second edition. Oh, yay. Hey, I'm yeah, so right. excited for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get a date Catherine again? <laughs> they're adding a third girl and more puzzles. What? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're not making like a sequel to Catherine. That's weird. Yeah, because we talked about a long time ago that they're possibly making a sequel to Catherine. Yeah, just make a sequel. Yeah, but instead they're doing like a 1.5. It's so weird. Yeah. Interesting. But give me anything... Atlas and Catherine slash dating sim puzzle maker, which is just a weird mesh all together. <laughs> yep. Fantastic game. So You didn't say dating sim in the genres. It's not listed on there oh, as a dating not, sim. That's weird. Isn't that weird? Uh, yeah. But I guess the main mechanic is puzzle. So That's true. Yeah. That being said, that has been episode 27 of Super Media All-Stars. You can find us on all kinds of social media. The first one being Facebook, Super Media All-Stars. We kind of post our weekly stuff on there including soundtracks, unboxings, steelbook stuff. Check that out. Please like and subscribe there. You can find us on Twitter at SmashPod. You can find us on Instagram at Supermedia All-Stars. Um, I also have an Instagram account of all my steelbooks at Steelbook Obsessed. Um, yeah, I think our next podcast is going to be the best of 2017, correct? Video or yep. Movies. Yep. Movie edition. It's going to be a video special, so I'll be excited for that. Yeah, we'll be streaming that on Facebook Live. Yep. So, yeah, everybody, yeah. Chime in. Yep. They seem to do really well dirt for the Video Game Awards, so I'm hoping it does just as well for movies. Yep. And then we'll also have a video up on YouTube later, and then also hopefully a successful audio version this yep. time. Fingers crossed. Uh, speaking of audio, you can check us out on your Apple services for podcasting. You can listen in to us on TuneIn Radio. You can find us on Google Play as well for all your Android users. And like I said, be sure to check out YouTube. Please like and subscribe there. We post all our content on YouTube. That being said, audience, thanks for listening. Guys, thank you for joining me tonight. We'll see you next time. For you. Well, we're waiting. Game over, man. Game over. Bye-bye. <laughs>
I am out of here.